Do we know for sure that we humans are the first civilization on Earth? Or was there already a developed civilization before us, or maybe even more than one? What if another industrial society had existed on Earth tens of millions of years ago, long before us, but now all traces of it have been lost? Or it is still possible to find some markers of the existence of someone in the past, whether it is our planet or, for example, Mars, Venus or even any distant exoplanet. Time mercilessly erases any traces of the presence of anything and anyone. Plate tectonics alone changes the face of the Earth beyond recognition. It seems that quite a lot of questions have already been asked in the introduction. Are there any answers to them? Let's try to figure it out today. As you already understood from the title of this video, today the Silurian hypothesis will be in the spotlight. In fact, this is an experiment that evaluates the ability of modern science to detect evidence of a previously highly developed civilization, perhaps several million years ago. Although it may seem an absurd idea, more inherent in conspiracy theorists, telepaths and lovers of all sorts of pyramid rocket conspiracies. And yet this thought experiment is the focus of one scientific article, the author of which is the astrophysicist Adam Frank. In his article, he presented a developed industrial civilization to people and wondered if it could be detected in space in other systems like ours. Or, for example, I would not like to think about this, but what traces will modern human civilization leave behind and how to find evidence of our existence in the distant future. The hypothesis is called the power of risk. All supposedly former civilizations from Archean aliens to Atlantis fall under it. Some versions of the Silurian hypothesis indicate that the early race completely died out due to some disease, war, or catastrophe. Another version indicates that the former race reached a high-tech level and for some reason left Earth in order to surf outer space in search of a new abode. The most exotic version of the Silurian hypothesis is the hypothesis of involution, according to which all animals descended from degraded representatives of times close to humans. Yes, it sounds insulting. But let's get back to real research. A lot of time and labor was devoted to searching for hints of climate change in distant terrestrial planets, the so-called hyperthermia, a kind of rapid temperature rise that could indicate the time of industrialization of civilization. This may suggest the presence of a sufficiently developed species. Such a leap is possible as a result of carbon emissions and so far may be the only proof that any race, including ours, will leave behind neither pyramids, nor skyscrapers, nor plastics or foam, nor Shakespeare's work, nor Beethoven's music will indicate our presence in the past, if we are talking about hundreds of thousands or even millions years. In the end, we are recognized only by the change in the breed, which marked the beginning of the so-called Anthropocene. These are terms used by many researchers to denote the current geological epoch, when human activity has a major impact on the climate and the environment. Although the Anthropocene has not yet been officially classified as a separate geological epoch, it is already clear that people have a significant influence on the geological record of our planet, shaping it today. We are already a geophysical force, and our presence is recorded in the isotopes of carbon, oxygen and nitrogen, in the extinctions of various sediments, emissions of heavy metals and synthetic chemicals. For example, the burning of fossil fuels by humans already has an impact on geological data, despite the fact that industrialization began only about 300 years ago. Well, with a big stretch, this can be considered at least some kind of plus. We managed to leave our mark, ladies and gentlemen. Future civilizations, having reached a certain level of development, will be able to learn about our existence by exploring ancient rocks. Eda, let's imagine that perhaps some other species on Earth briefly rose to at least our level of development millions of years ago. 
Are there any traces of them left today? For example, fossils, remains of buildings or space structures. Maybe, but it may also be that all such evidence has been erased into dust and that the only remaining traces are in very minor features of geochemistry. In addition, fossils are extremely rare and partial, so evidence can easily be overlooked, especially if a civilization existed for only a few thousand years, like ours. The truth is that modern humans have existed for a relatively short time, and life on Earth has existed for a total of three and a half billion years. That is, there was more than enough time in the history of our planet for the rise and fall of not one, but several pre-human industrial civilizations. It could be a certain race with its own technologies, vehicles, folklore and traditions in the same place and under the familiar sky. Well, about such bygone civilizations, industrial facilities built by them that existed for no more than several hundred thousand years, we have no reliable mentions and not even a single flying saucer with a mummified alien inside. We find only the most ancient structures and tools created by humans. And these finds are only a few thousand years old. In any case, in a few million years, when plate tectonics starts working, everything on the surface, including the Earth itself, will be at the bottom of the seas and oceans, one will turn into mountain peaks. If we talk about the age of our planet, then it is quite solid, and its solid surface, which makes up land masses, varies greatly in age in different places. Some of these land masses were formed billions of years ago. Others were formed from molten magma during the last hundred million years. Iceland, for example, began to form as a result of volcanic activity only 70 million years ago. Some small islands continue to form to this day. From a geological point of view, one of the oldest places on Earth is the Pilbara, a large region in the northwest of Australia. The local breed first began to form more than 3 billion years ago. The segments of its iron-rich stone serve as the best preserved example of the oldest rock in the world. Such ancient stones must be the source of some rather interesting fossils. And in general, Many deserts can be suitable for research, where there is no tectonic activity and it is possible to find undisturbed rocks of the right age. Who knows, if you give the Silurian hypothesis the right to life, perhaps research will go so far that with the right tests, researchers will one day be able to confidently say whether there was a person here or maybe a levitating humanoid with a big brain. That is, a certain civilization some millions of years ago. Questions about the planetary impact of civilization may, by the way, be important for the future exploration of other planets and our search for intelligent extraterrestrial life. Early Mars or early Venus may have been more habitable than they are now, and maybe one day we will find there the same geological deposits that indicate a civilization that once existed. And yes, it is hypothetically possible that previous civilizations of the Earth could have gone into space and left artifacts on other celestial bodies, such as the Moon or Mars. It will be easier to find obvious material evidence in these two worlds than on Earth, where erosion and tectonic activity have erased most of the cultural traces. But still, why look for alien life there, on other planets, when we could find it here, remote not for kilometers, but for years. Indeed, several unexplained temperature anomalies have been recorded in the history of the Earth, which could possibly accelerate the process of expulsion of intelligent life from the planet or its death. For example, it is believed that 55 million years ago there was a mysterious jump in temperature rise, known as the paleocentric thermal maximum. One of the most significant abrupt climate changes in geological history, lasting about 200,000 years. 
It manifested itself in a sharp increase in temperatures on the surface of continents and in the upper layers of the ocean, as well as in changes in the isotopic composition of atmospheric carbon and the extinction of a number of species. According to climate reconstructions, the temperature on the continents at that time increased by 8 degrees Celsius. The water temperature in the tropical zone was 20 degrees, which is one and a half degrees more than the current value. In the Arctic seas, the warming was significantly large scale, and the increase in the temperature of the surface waters of the Arctic Ocean could be up to 10 degrees Celsius. The most distinct thermal maximum was manifested in the carbon isotopic composition of carbonate deposits. During the thermal maximum, the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere reached at least five times higher than the current value. Moreover, his great honor dissolved in the ocean water, thereby increasing its acidity. As a result, the carbonate shells of the dying plankton began to dissolve in water. The thermal maximum could have been caused by the fall of an asteroid or comet, or it could have been the eruption of a huge volcano, or it could also have been caused by the activity of an ancient civilization that rose just like us and then fell. This, by the way, may be the fate of all advanced species, ups and downs that occur as naturally as the seasons change. Such a universe is ironic, constantly creating characters whose technology leads to the very end they are trying to avoid. So, the question is, will we be able to notice and identify traces of the existence of an early civilization using the method of archaeology and paleontology today, and how can we do this? This question is still open. One of the key issues in assessing the probability of detecting such a civilization is understanding how often an industrially developed civilization appears, given that life originated and that some species is intelligent. There is little point in searching for buildings or long-lasting information carriers, since over millions of years tectonics and weathering will destroy them. Not to mention the relative rarity of such structures on Earth. Today, for example, massive clusters of solid buildings of human civilization occupy less than 1% of the land area. That is, in fact, if a huge asteroid in the near future changes the appearance of our planet beyond recognition, including people's faces, then you will have to spend a lot of time to find at least some evidence of life in the past. And most likely, rock art in the style of here I was is unlikely to help identify our civilization. But even if not now, it is quite possible that we will disappear in a few centuries or millennia, in fact in a moment on the scale of the geological history of the planet and even more so of the universe. And then human civilization is just a small episode, similar to those that already took place in earlier geological epochs. And then, in tens of millions of years, the next civilization will appear. Then again, Perhaps some civilization will still be able to become something more. Or maybe we are the same civilization, and we have every chance to go further, exploring and getting to know ourselves, our planet and other measures.